I created a stop motion animation by assembling 2,412 individually cut pieces of children's craft felt into 90 original artworks, all to capture a very specific feeling. Think about how the passage of time is shown in visual art. With a single still image, you can capture a moment frozen in time. But with a whole series of images, you can condense an entire lifetime down to a short, fleeting moment. For me, the visual of growing up unnaturally fast, it leaves me feeling a mixture of nostalgia and melancholy. By taking the visual of characters dancing with one another, match cutting between different stages of life, and combining that with arts and crafts felt, a medium reminiscent of childhood, I'm hoping to capture that bittersweet type of feeling through animation. To play up the childlike tone of the animation, I've designed my style frames using bright colors and a playful, cubist-inspired shape language. So, to create an animation made out of cutout craft felt, I'll first need to create a 2D animation digitally. Then, I can use each frame of that animation as a blueprint when cutting out my pieces of felt. I can assemble those pieces into individual artworks and take a picture of each frame, creating a stop-motion animation. Just looking at how many elements I have to animate here is a little bit overwhelming, but Ultimately, the designs I came up with feel right emotionally, and I don't want to compromise the design by oversimplifying it. So, I'm just going to go for it. The dance between the two characters is the most important part of the animation, so that's where I'm starting. Because the characters need to be seen from every angle as they spin, there's truly no shortcut I can take here. They'll have to be drawn by hand, frame by frame. For the medium of the animation, I'm going to need a lot of felt. Using my designs as reference when picking out the colors, I decided to buy felt by the yard. After studying dozens of swing dance videos and refining the motion of 90 drawings, I choreographed a dance between the two characters. Of course, smooth animation doesn't immediately mean good animation, but I want how the characters move to reflect an aspect of their personality. The elderly couple has experience, but can't move as quickly, so their keyframes are perfectly in sync, but move slowly and smoothly. The kids, on the other hand, are energetic, but completely uncoordinated. Even if you're not consciously thinking about the decisions being made in the animation, my hope is that you still feel a difference in how the characters move. With character animation complete, I moved on to animating the environments. This includes materials loosely flowing off the characters, like hair and fabric, objects in the foreground, like flowers, smoke, and caterpillars, and the objects in the background, like the sun and stars. The background for each frame is designed to be made up of three layers. On top is a rectangle of felt for the sky with the objects in the background cut out of it. The negative space of the cutout shapes reveals a second layer of felt underneath, which needs to be adhered to a solid base to give the entire artwork structural integrity. For the base, I'm using a thin 13-point chipboard that I trimmed down to 5 by 7 inch rectangles. For the solid layer of felt that sits directly on top of the base plate, I trimmed my white craft felt down to the same size, 5 by 7 inches. Then, I applied a layer of fabric adhesive to the base plate to glue the two pieces together. That is not feeling very tacky. I'm gonna throw some weight on this and let it dry overnight just to make sure that it holds. Okay, so as I'm working through the effects animation, I'm noticing a bit of a disconnect between the energy being brought by the characters and their environments. This animation's made to be a perfect loop, right? So we cut from the slow withering flowers with the elderly couple to the slow crawling caterpillars with the kids. Having the kids surrounded by caterpillars is nice thematically, but it's also just kind of sucking the energy out of the scene. I'm also not loving the energy being brought in the scene with the young adults. I like how the smoke from the candles is framing the characters, but it's also completely covering up the woman's dress, preventing the scene from having any fun, flowing motion to it. I have a couple ideas of how to fix these inconsistencies, but I'm just gonna have to keep working with it. Oh yeah, that, that's feeling solid. I could go ahead and repeat this process for all my frames. Okay, I have finished outline animation for all the elements in the scene. 
I end up deciding to switch out the caterpillars for butterflies to create a more energetic bursting motion. And I decided not to remove the smoke that was covering the woman's dress, but to change the design of her hairstyle to bring some of that flowing motion into the scene. Now, all I have to do to finish my digital animation is fill in my outlines with solid shapes. Then I can use those shapes as the blueprint when cutting out my pieces of felt. Where the first two rectangular layers of my artwork could be cut out by hand, it's important that all the intricate details are precisely cut out. If there's too much fluctuation in the shape and size of the pieces, I run the risk of having my final felt stop motion not read clearly. To ensure that everything is cut out exactly, I plan to use a vinyl cutter for all the remaining pieces of felt. To get the best results for my machine, I specifically bought a fabric grip mat and a bonded fabric blade. I've truly only ever used my cutting machine on paper and plastic materials, so I just want to run a quick test to make sure I can cut out my craft felt without any hiccups. Oh, that's not sticking. That is not, okay. I cannot get it to stick any more than that. It is bunching up. I'm not feeling confident. All right, let's try this again. Hmm. That blade is not cutting it. Please, 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 please. Even with the stickiest mat and deepest blade I can buy, I just can't get my machine to make a clean cut all the way around these small, intricate details. And even when it does cut them out, the felt is so fibrous I can't get a clear read on the shape. What do I do? Okay, so I am 24 frames into filling in my outline animation with solid shapes, and I'm not feeling too confident with how it's turning out. I'm using my style frames as reference when cleaning up my animation, which looks fine digitally, but my characters alone are currently fluctuating between nine and 12 layers tall. If this were to just stop at being a digital animation, yeah, I could hide my mess of layers within my project file. But for this project, each layer of my digital animation ultimately is a blueprint to cut out real physical felt. And felt has actual thickness to it. I'm worried that if my felt artworks have too many layers to them, they're gonna be so tall that my final animation won't even be legible. Every decision I've made on this project has largely been motivated by what feels right, which is a good instinct to have, I think, right? Like animation should evoke emotion, but animation is also just a very technical process. And I need a better plan of how to balance what looks good visually with what can practically be achieved. The problem with felt, it's that it's stretchy, right? If I wanna get small, intricate details to cut out of this material without it getting bunched up in the machine, I need to find a way for it to all be bonded together. Just to try it out, I went ahead and bought a small piece of fusible interfacing. This is the same material used in shirt collars to make the fabric more stiff. My hope is that if I bond this material to the back of my felt, it'll be strong enough to prevent it from stretching and getting caught in the machine. Even if I am able to prevent the felt from getting bunched up in the machine, I still need to find a way to contain the fibers of the felt to be able to get clean, legible edges to my cutout shapes. To hold the fibers together, I created a mixture of equal parts white glue and water. I applied a coat to my test strip of felt to let dry overnight. To rethink how I approach cleaning up my digital animation, I needed a plan for how to limit the number of layers of felt between every frame. I decided to completely scrap my original cubist inspired designs for a more literal directional lighting approach. The characters are made up of four layers. We start with the shadow layer, then the mid-tone layer, then the highlights, then the hair and color accents share the same layer on top. This order is true across the board. Shadows, mid-tones, highlights, hair and accents. Four layers for every frame. Once my treated felt dried, I was ready to make another test cut.
Okay, I am finished with the digital animation. I have to say, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I actually like the more naturalistic lighting quite a lot more than my original designs. And I didn't totally give up on the shape language from my original style frames, but I brought some of those geometric shapes over as subtle color accents in my new design. If this is how it looks as a digital animation, I'm hoping it only becomes better as I scale up my workflow to turn every frame into a felt artwork. With thousands of small pieces of felt needing to be cut out and assembled into artworks, there's still so much that could go wrong. As I prepped my sheets of felt, I considered two big problems left to solve. When the felt is ready to be cut out, I need a way to keep track of all the pieces so not to mix up or lose anything. And when the felt pieces are ready to be glued down, I need a way to make sure that each piece lines up exactly like it does in my digital animation. A little bit of wobbling between frames can look charming and homemade, but too much wobbling would just be distracting and take away from all the subtlety I put into the animation. To avoid making any more mistakes and having to redo work down the line, I developed a system to account for each piece of felt being cut out. As I exported the individual layers of animation, I gave each sheet of felt a name. I physically wrote out each name onto sticky notes, making sure I knew exactly how many sheets of my treated craft felt my animation needed. As the individual pieces are cut out, they're separated by frame into different plastic bags. Then the sheet of felt is marked off as having been cut and the number of individual pieces are cataloged, ensuring that every piece of cutout craft felt is accounted for. Now, I just need to make sure that all these individual pieces are glued down in the exact position for each frame of artwork. Mounting my camera and light directly above my desk, I sent a live video feed to my computer. I then uploaded my digital animation as a transparent video overlay. When gluing down the felt artworks, I use my digital animation overlay as reference to carefully line up each piece. From here, it was just a matter of patiently repeating this process until every piece of felt was cut out and assembled. Okay. Every single felt artwork is finally finished. As I've been gluing the pieces down, I've been using my live video feed to snap photos just to see how my animation is coming along. It's honestly looking a little bit bland right now, but to be fair, this isn't my final animation by any means. Because I wanted an evenly lit surface when gluing the pieces down, I threw my light directly above my desk, which created a pretty flat looking image. A big part of the appeal of these artworks is their depth, so I wanna make sure that I'm highlighting that when I capture the final stop motion. So rather than lighting my artwork from directly above, I set up a key light at a sharp 90 degree angle. Having the light catch the edge of the felt and cast a soft shadow helps reveal the depth of the stacked layers of felt. Then I added a second softer light directly above my artwork to help reduce the contrast between dark and light. At the end of this whole process, it became clear to me that my final animation wouldn't look exactly how I imagined it would on day one. It contains all the alterations, imperfections, and compromises I made along the way. It's a bit unintuitive, but I found when I'm not flexible enough to iterate on my vision during the creative process, I often get results that feel artificial. Like with any art form, creative vision and real world constraints shouldn't be seen as in conflict, but as two factors needing to strike the right dance. I lie awake inside.